Precious Father, we say that we are very grateful to you for um, the great work of salvation you've made available for us. And Father, it is because of that that we are gathered here. Um, the word of God makes it clear that the gathering shall be only unto you. It's only you that we are gathered unto. Father, we commit this whole session to hand that our understanding would always keep on progressing so that we always have clarity in the things that you've done for us. As we move towards spiritual maturity, then levels of double-mindedness, ambiguity is slowly being dealt with. And then we come to that place, we come to that place where our, we are so sure and assured of everything willed by you, Jesus. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. And if there's anything that stands in the way of our understanding, we come against it. And Father, we allow only the light of the gospel to shine brightly in our hearts to the praise and to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we've prayed and we say a big amen to that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let me just welcome everybody to our daily teaching devotional, which is called Epignosis Online or Epignosis Daily from the quarters of Full Gospel Church International, the London branch, Christ Revealed Center. And the Christ Revealed Center, it tells us or it epitomizes the vision of this ministry. The vision of this ministry is basically threefold. One, to reveal all that Jesus has done for the benefit of the believer. Number two, to reveal what Jesus can do through the believer. And number three, to reveal what the believer can do through Christ. So in him, we are blessed. And through him, to us, we are glorified. And that's why we are here to learn. That means that the entire writings of the word of God is to bring the believer to that place of maturity whereby they know and understand all that Jesus has done, that it becomes part and parcel of their thinking processes. So we have been dealing with spiritual growth and we've still got a bit still to travel on. And, and the emphasis for last week was the practical aspects of our authority in Christ. And I'm going to continue with that practical ability, the practical aspect of it. Very, very important um, because it's one thing to hear about it. It's another thing to be able to apply. So this week, just like last week, I'm going to deal with what we call functional knowledge. Okay, in, 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 in the word of God, we've got knowledge, which is just the facts, okay? There's the gathering of the facts, okay? Looking for where the facts are. Then there's the gathering it, putting together. Then there is the understanding it. Then there is the applying it. All that is used, is, is, is used in the English language from one word called wisdom. But in the Greek, there are different, different words for it. So when you are now searching for the facts, the Greek use the word sunesis. That is, you are bringing them together. Okay? Then, when you brought them together, now you need to know how it all fits together. That is phronesis. That's also translated wisdom. But you have to look at the, at the context in the, in, in, the, in the Greek or in the English to know which one of them. Then you've gathered the facts, like we have gathered facts here. You know, we've gathered intelligence from the word of God. We have gone through it. We are, we'll be able to piece it together. Our understanding is getting clearer. Then now you have to now apply, know what to do. That is, that is what is known in the Greek as Sophia, S-O-F-I-A, which means skill, skill, the ability to apply. Now you now you are you know it so well. Nobody can steal it away from you. Nobody can cheat you. Nobody can deceive you. When you get to Sophia, the ability to apply, then we say you are spiritually matured because you know it so much so that even if somebody comes and tries to twist it in a certain way, 
your your the process of gathering that knowledge and putting it together and having used it for quite a number of while that alone gives you an informed choice and in that informed choice you know that you know that you know for example you know that you know now nobody can 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 steal it away from you that jesus died for our sins how did it come about somebody brought a fact to you you heard it you continued to hear it being preached over your life you yourself you have seen evidence of it and now it is something that has settled in you so those are the stages those are the stages of of, of part of spiritual growth that is why it is not enough to listen to the word of god once so in this week's segment we continue in the same line practical application practical application of of our authority in Christ, very important. So let's get into this. And today I'm going to revisit in our notes, our authority as it was outlined and explained by Apostle Paul. I want to revisit some key areas of it again. I want to revisit those areas so that we, our understanding still becomes solid. It is very easy as, as believers who sometimes forget, you know, sometimes we learn things, but over time we allow it to slip. So let us understand this, that when it comes to the believer's authority, God wants believers to know. I, I want you to hear this out before we go in, into it more and more. God, through the writings of the apostles, through the word of God, wants believers to know they are no longer subject to Satan. Let that sink in. I repeat, through the teaching of the writings of the foundational apostles, one big area that God wants every believer to know and to be so much assured. I mean, if there is anything that you can, after salvation, you are struggling to accept the concepts and you can't know, this area is the major. The, what is that area? That God wants the believer to know without any reservation. There should not be any doubt in your mind concerning this area. There should not be any doubt that the believer is no longer subject to Satan. Why? Because the believer, since the day you believe, you have been delivered from, from the dominion of darkness. So let's look at that verse in Colossians chapter one, and let's look at let's 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 X-ray let's X-ray that verse critically. Colossians chapter one. Please, I want you to pay very much critical attention for today's teaching. Be very 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 much attentive. You know, for me, this is everything. This is what literally this knowledge change my life in the work in Christ because I'd been a believer for so many years and I didn't know. I just knew in bits and drabs, but I didn't know that this was the emphasis. Now, for some people, that would seem a new thing because why? Why? Because we have been reached to from the other side. What is the other side? If you if you be honest with me, I'm taking my time because this thing I'm going to share today is so significant. I, I, I'm just I don't want to rush it and, and spoil it. You know, because I want you to get the import. I want you to get the import very very well. You know, because there are so many schools of thoughts in believers' mind. That's why there are some believers even you know in their prayer. You know, their prayer position is so weak. They are not. They are, they are not. They are not. They are not sure of themselves in prayer. See, and, and that ought to change. And it's all because of a kind of mindset of tea preaching, which has been within the church for years, and it is still raining. That in our average churches, Sunday after Sunday, the way the messages are wired, it always creates the impression that Satan is powerful. It creates that impression. 
Now, let me, let me just drop something before I go into this verse. Some people don't know the difference between the function of a thing and so-called the power of a thing. Let me give you an example. As human beings, it's normal for us, it's normal for us to live outside water. Fishes live in water. Okay, right? So that is their normal environment. So for a lot of African believers, Asian believers, you know, our sense of power is referring to their sense of oppression. So for example, spirits, spirits can appear and disappear. It does not mean they are powerful. But we think that the fact that the, the, the spirit can appear and disappear means they are powerful. They are appearing and disappearing. It is their nature. Just like birds fly. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it be funny that you, are, you see a bird fly, you know, and then you, 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 are, you are standing among people, then you start jumping up and down. Hey, this bird is powerful. Then people will be looking at you. Well, our birds are supposed to fly. Birds are supposed to fly. There's nothing, there's nothing strange about that. They have, they have the equipment. They have the equipment. So the fact that the man can speak, the man can speak and uh, somebody's leg cannot move, does not mean power. It is part of their makeup in that realm. So I repeat again that the spirit of God wants every believer to know that they are no longer are subject to Satan's authority. It, it means that until this thing that I keep on emphasizing is held strong in your mind, you will not be able to enjoy your authority maximally. The believer in Christ is superior to Satan. The reason why you are afraid, I am, and I used to be afraid, I mean, I take myself out is that we have heard more stories about witches and wizards. Most of all the, all the stories we hear about were more about witches and wizards. In our stories, on, on, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our literary stories, on television, in concerts, in films, look at films like Dracula, look at films like Omen, look at films like Harry Potter, what are they projecting? So we have, do we have, have we got any film? Can you tell me any film where somebody did a film of Apostle Paul and the, and the, and the, and the apostles who are dealing with the dominion of darkness? We don't have anything like that. So we have, we have got stacked up against us in our mind. Uh, accounts of so-called satanic display more than resurrection power display. That is where the problem is. So when you say, when, you, when, when the apostles and the word of God and Jesus is trying to let us know that Satan is nothing. Remember, he himself is a falling angel. So I want that to sit firmly. Let me repeat that statement again. Let me repeat that statement again. God wants believers to know functional knowledge that they are no longer subject to Satan. Since the day you believe Jesus, you are no longer subject to Satan. Why? Because you have been delivered from the dominion of darkness forever. And I'm going to explain that. Forever. Now, it might, it might look like it's not so in your case. It's because your mind is still weighing stronger in those facts which you have held onto for years and this thing I'm sharing now, probably you've heard it once, 
twice, or probably even it's your first time you are hearing this. And you have been a believer for 10 years, 15 years. So that darkness of that knowledge sits higher than this light, but the, but the light will overtake it. Glory to God. I said the light of this word will overtake that darkness. The light of this word will displace that darkness. And once you get a hold of it, don't let it go. Stand in that revelation until. So let's do the Colossians 1. Let's do the Colossians 1, 13. Let's start from verse 9. Observe, because I want, we are dealing with practical approach to our authority. Observe. Observe. Very, very important that we do understand that. For this reason, look at, look at Paul's intelligent writing. Look at the emphasis. It surprises me that when reading Paul's writings, I never saw anywhere where Paul or the apostles spent a chapter on Satan. Yes, in our churches, there are programs that are being held and they, they address Satan. They spend weeks on a program on Satan. Some even teach on the hierarchy of Satan. For what? For what? For what? Did Paul write anything about that? No. He just enumerated that we are high above these ones. That's all. Did Peter write anything? No. The only thing Paul said about Satan is that we are not ignorant of his devices. But the rest of the writing, I'm bringing your mind to something. The rest of the writing was about that we are superior. That is the emphasis. That's why I said, for this reason, we also, from the day we heard of it, what is the of it, that you guys are born again, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you, asking that you may be filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of his will, Hebadiah, in all spiritual wisdom. Now, look at the way Paul used the word wisdom that I talk about here. So he used the word wisdom. Did you remember I said that the word wisdom, English language, that's only one word to explain this type of knowledge, right? But when he uses wisdom here, yeah, the word he used here is the word, is the word Sophia, which means that you, you know it so well that you know you 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 are you you are unashamed, convinced about it. And it's you're you are not going no more by feeling, hearsay, supposition, assumptions, experiences. You are no longer going by that. It's not it's not it's not some some figment of your imagination, but it is, uh, it's, uh, you know that it works. So that's why I said that this is my target and this is my prayer, that you get this knowledge of his will. The word knowledge there is accurate uh, in all spiritual wisdom or the ability to apply what the spirit has made available in their writings. And what is that? In comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. What is the ways and purpose of God? The fact that you are superior to Satan. And in understanding and discernment of spiritual things, that when you know that, look at the result in verse 10, that you may walk, you may walk, live and conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the Lord. In a manner worthy of the Lord is not referring to morality. It cannot be. Because you are not morally sound before you accepted Jesus. God did not wait for you to be perfect morally. God did not wait for Abraham to be perfect morally. Abraham only believed. So he's not talking about manner worthy of the Lord in terms of morality. That's not, what he's, that's not the subject here at all. The subject is saying that God has placed you in a certain place of authority. And he expects you by that knowledge, that skillful knowledge, you walk in that consciousness of your authority always that's what he meant by walk in a manner the word manner is the word anastrophe in the greek it, it, it's a mindset a good one at that a positive one in other words walking in your authority brings the next sentence fully pleasing to him fully pleasing to him 
Do you remember in the gospel of Luke chapter 10, Jesus sent out 70 people, sent them out two by two, gave them power over Satan and evil spirits, right? And then when they came back, what, 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 what was the result? The Bible said they came back rejoicing. And they said, Master, even the demons are subject to us. But then Jesus added something to that. He said, do not rejoice that these spirits are subject to you. It means that this one, it is the least of the least. It should be the norm. Oh, Baba, may the spirit of God communicate that thing to you. I should not go to church. And a certain man is invited, somebody is invited, and then when he lays and people fall under the power, that should that should be the you know the utopian excitement that I, it should be that it should be normal. It should not be for only pastors, prophets, evangelists. It's for every believer. It should be the norm. It should be the commonplace. We all should be operating like that. We all should be operating like that. We should not be sigh. Look at this man who he lifted his hands and people were falling down. He spoke and demons came. No, 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 no. What did Jesus tell? He said, "Don't rejoice." This I, 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 what is that? That should be the norm. It's not for a select few. It's because you've not been trained correctly. That's why he gave them that training exercise. I wanted you to know that using your authority over Satan over demons should be the norm. It should be normal. It should not shock you. Then look at what he said in the next sentence. But rejoice, that your names are written in heaven. That means salvation precedes and is higher because it encapsulates, because Authority is a subset of our born again life. So why should that shock you? That shouldn't shock you. Look at that. Say that that is how you please him. When you walk in your authority, fully pleasing to him and desiring to please him in all things. Now, anytime you see the word all in the Bible, don't give it a, a, one, a one size fits all meaning. All. It is always used in context with what is being discussed at that moment. For example, in Romans chapter 8, we will hear this Bible verse, all things work together for our good. Then we give it a, a general blanket a, a meaning, all things. So when I'm not getting things, uh, things are not moving well for me, all things. The dog dies, all things. The cat dies, all things. Things are tough, all things. Things did not go according to plan, all things. I was about to take the train, but I took the, the ship all things. You know what that verse means? So all, A-L-L, -L, anytime you see it in the Bible, ask yourself, which all? Which all? A second example is in Philippians chapter 4, where Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. We've given it a general blanket meaning. I can do all things through Christ, even though I did not learn the exam, I'll pass. Haba. Haba. I can do all things through Christ. I'm not a bodybuilder, but I can carry 175 kg of metal. How? So the all is in context. What was the context? Let's take this one first. The all of Philippians 4 means what? He said, he explained that when they gave the gifts to him from Epaphroditus, you know, he wanted to tell the people that the church in Philippi, that, oh, you guys, thank you very much for the thoughtfulness of bringing me all this. You know, but I, Paul, have trained myself. Whether things are abundant, I am. The, it doesn't change me. When there is lack, it doesn't change me. I have learned how to be. I have learned how to abase when things are not good and my emotions are the same. And I've learned how to abound when there is plentiful. That one too, it will not change. Therefore, in this, I I can do all these two things. What are those two things? To abase when things are not working well and to abound. It does not mean that Paul can do all things. No, 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 no. Then what about the Romans 8 1? All things work together for good. Read the context. He was talking about predestination in Christ. That in, in Christ, when God designed the system, that when a man comes in Christ, he has all of God, the things of God. 
So he talked about predestination, foreknowledge. Those are the things he was talking about. He talked about the plan of salvation. So when he said that all things work together for our good, all things of what Christ has done in salvation, what is it? Foreknowledge, predestination, uh, glorification. That is what he was talking about. All the things of the spirit. In other words, if Jesus went to the land to die for us in sin, then how much more, you know, the pressures we're facing in life. So here again, when I say that, desiring to please him in all things, all, all in the area of our authority. That is how we bear fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, uh, and clearer insight, acquaintance, and recognition. Then he goes on. We pray that you may be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to the mind of his glory to exercise what? Every kind of endurance and patience. That means that if I know, Hebaya, that I am superior to Satan, then no matter the problem that comes, I have the supernatural arsenal which is equal to any task. So I don't care. Hey, hey, if Satan wants to, Satan wants us to play this game, eh? he wants us to play this game to stretch me for six months, we'll play it. Let's play. Uh -huh. If he brings it, I command in the name of Jesus. If he brings it, I command in the name of Jesus. If he brings it, I stop it in the name of Jesus. If he, bring, if he wants us to play for six months, I have a superior arsenal in Christ. Therefore, I know I can't wait. He's only trying to call it bluff. I will show him where power lies. That is what he's talking about. We, because of that, so I persevere, knowing that my authority is superior than his. So six months, okay, we'll stand six months. Eight months, uh-huh, we'll stand. Because at the end, we win always. That's what the Bible meant by fight the good fight of faith. The only fight that the believer is supposed to fight is the fight of faith. Why? Because it has won and it wins always. It has won and it wins always. It is not now we are going to win because we stand already on victory ground. We stand on the parade ground of victory and we enjoy consistent victory constantly, always, irrevocably, regardless of the circumstance. And this is available because the one that is matured in Christ knows that I have the arsenal that is superior to Satan because Satan was a common angel and he was KO'd by my father in Christ and he has never been able to repeat that. That should be something that it should stay with me forever. So whatever he does, I know that I know in that lies the deception. Then he goes on. He said that I am I, I endure uh, every kind of endurance because what I have is superior uh, with joy, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father. So that it 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 it, it always triggers thanksgiving because when Satan you hear you hear bad news, let's see, then you start to laugh. <laughs> I know, I know, I, I, I'm mature enough to know that I know where this thing is coming from. I know where this thing is coming from. Giving thanks to the Father. Next sentence. Who has qualified, not going to, qualified and made us fit to share huh, the portion which is the inheritance of the saints. What is the inheritance of the saints? The spirit of God. The spirit of God is the very power of God. He said, he has given it to you and me. He has not finished. Can you see how he started in the verse 9? He said, I pray that you may be filled with this knowledge. What is the knowledge? Those are the points he just listed. Verse 11. Huh? Invigorated with that knowledge of that power. When he says invigorated, he's talking about the fact that your mind will be saturated. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll be honest with you. I didn't know that. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, when I got born again from 1981, uh, I, I didn't know. It took me a year. I, I didn't know. I used to get once in a while. But um, I'll be honest, I was never conscious of my authority. 
Yeah, I knew that Jesus died, and I knew that uh, sometimes I can command in the name of Jesus. We, I knew some isolated Bible verses, you know, whatever you buy on earth shall be bound in heaven in the name of the, at the name of Jesus. I mean, I should say, speak that verse wrongly at the mention of the name of Jesus. I mean, when I check, there is no mention. It is not at the mention. It is at the names. It's not at the mention. And we are, and I just yeah, the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, everything's in heaven. I, I just knew it, but I never, I was never conscious of it that it is available and it works 24-7, 365. And I didn't even know that I was superior to Satan. So I was using the authority based on trial and error. I was using the authority with just um, what I call a weak hope. I am doing it because I've seen other, others do it. I am doing it just in the hope that something will click, something will happen, something somehow, somehow, I did, you know, it will happen. And that's the way we, we sing that song. That's the way we sing songs about the name of Jesus. You know, you know that song. Um, at, the, at the name of Jesus, something. At the mention of the name of Jesus, something, something special happens. It's not a magic. It's not a magic one. It's not a magic one. So for some believers, that's the way they use the name of Jesus. They use it like a magic wand. Let me use it. Ah, like, it's like juju. It's like juju. Ah, the trouble is coming. Let me let me let me let me, let me use it in, let me, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mm. In the name of Jesus. No. No, 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 no. So you, you yourself, you are doing it because you are not convinced of it. And that's what he's saying here. See, you must be convinced. Not that because you are convinced before it will work. That's not the idea. It works always whether you are convinced or not. But because of Satan's tricks against your mind. It is he, Satan, who wants you to think it's not working always. That's why he prayed that prayer, that you might stand in this wisdom. See that? Then the verse 12 comes in. Know that you have been qualified. Then the verse 13 is the finale of that argument. He started in verse 9. I repeat, the believer is superior to Satan, and God wants believers to know they are no longer underlined, underscored. I repeat, God wants the believer to know, underlined, underscored, that they are no longer subject to Satan because they have been delivered from his dominion and authority. Very, very, very important. Verse 13, the father, yeah, 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 has not going to, has not going to, has not going to, has not is about to, has not is about to, has delivered, d, d, delivered, past tense, delivered. I don't care what your argument is. Either you are refusing to understand the word of God or you don't believe God, the word, or you are only making mouth to mouth, but you don't believe it. Because for, for this verse to be there, and you are still saying that, eh, but you know, you know, I know that Colossians 1.13 is true, but you know, some situations are different. You know, you have a serious problem of humility. You, there's no experience. The word of God is superior to any mindset. I don't care what people's experiences are. I don't care what the traditional belief is. The word of God is settled forever in heaven. Nothing can circumvent it. You either believe it or you still walk in your own old ways of your doubt of your mind. The father has delivered and drawn us to himself. How? Look at the words now. Look at the words. Look at the words. Here. Huh? Huh? Drawn us out to himself. Look at it. Out of the control and dominion of darkness. I don't know whether it is the English language or it's just outrun plain stubbornness of our understanding. So I want to dwell this here before I go to the next sentence. I, you know, it, it, I, I don't understand why this should even be an argument. This verse cancels out 
this teaching on generational curses, altar versus altar teachings, Sikibum's and Inkibum's teachings, my story is different teachings. This verse is the overall and all. If you are struggling with this, that concept, this is your verse. You must master this verse and let this verse be there like the way you drink water and breathe air. The Father has delivered. The word delivered is a Greek word, lutero. It is a ayaboka yabayabaya. It is a complete, I like the way the French use the word affranchi. It is not in percentages. The deliverance was not in percentage. This also is the answer to the so-called deliverance ministry thing. That a believer needs deliverance. Where? Where? Did you not read this? The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself. The deliverance is past since the day you receive Jesus. Look at that. Drawn us to himself out of the control. One. Whatever control, I don't even care whether it was in your family whether it has been raining in your family, but you, so long as you are born again, minus you, you are exempt from it. And it's even because of you that it will end. So you better know how to use this and put an end to that in the family. If you even think there's something wrong, the control of Satan over every aspect of your life ended the day you received Jesus, bam. And that control is irreversible, outright, outrank. Much less, unparalleled. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even know sometimes how we even read the Bible. Out of the control of darkness. Anything, Satan is darkness, sin is anything. Whether they've carried your name to a shrine, it all got shattered. You did not hear me. It all got shattered. They can even they can repeat their trip to that shrine. I'm telling you, it will not even do anything. Just that ignorance is our problem. Ignorance, ignorance. Why? Because by believing that in your mind, you have opened the door to that thought thing, thinking pattern. And there are some believers, that's why all this clear teaching by the apostles, they'll still say, yeah, you know, yeah, I know what you're saying, see, but you see, hmm, you know, if you look at the way the problem is going, because the person does not know. The person does not know. You might think every believer, listen, many believers go to church, I'm telling you, some of them have no clue even of what I'm talking about, but it has never been taught in their churches. They've always told them what th something is wrong, something is wrong, something is wrong, something is wrong. Bring this, bring bread, bring sand, bring water, bring bottle. Always it's like that. Always. So one step forward, two steps backwards, running around. It's like we never arrive. It is an insult to the work of grace in Christ. For whom Jesus died for, spent his whole life planning before the foundation of the world and letting there come prophecies from Genesis. And then he, it climaxed in he himself, God, Papa God, Papa God, humbling himself to become a man for this purpose and be subject to start the family and to crown it all in the hands of wicked men who spat on him and insulted him. God, and upon that, spent the most dreadful time of horror the horrors of separation, three days and three nights in Hades. To do this, then comes some ignoramus, not well-read person who will come and tell you that, that even though Jesus died, but your case is different. So who, who, who died for who? Who died for who? You are out of that control. I don't care the way you feel or what you are seeing. 
That is why you have got knowledge now. So now begin to apply. Out of the control and dominion. The word dominion uh, is domain. Main, main area of control. Main. So the main area of control of darkness and, and, the, and, and their operation were severed. So since you got born again, just that you didn't know me too, I didn't know. I was we all, me, me and you all were in the same camp. Satan was knocking our heads together with ignorance. I was ignorant for over 15 years to 20 years. Though I was a believer, tongue talking. Ignore, ignorance, I didn't know. So Satan was having a field day in my mind. Everything that happens, I connected like there's, some, there's something wrong. I couldn't function. Not knowing since that day that the light of the gospel entered you, you had been free from all these things. And you didn't know that, just like when slave trade was announced, some slaves did not know that emancipation has come and they were still, still serving their slave masters. You are out of that control. You are out of that dominion. There is nothing of Satan, uh, even if life is hard and difficult, that is, that is, that is, has any hold on you. It's just that it's a lack of knowledge of what to do with what you have. That's why he's trying to take advantage of you. And look at that. Not only are you out of the control of darkness, look at where you are. He has transferred, look at where you are. Now, I want you to, it's not a, it's not a play of words, though. I want you to watch something here. You watch. Look at here. Look at how he addressed. I don't know if you have realized. He, he, when he came to Satan, he didn't use the word kingdom. But when he came to Christ, he used the word kingdom. I submit to you, Satan has no kingdom. He has a dominion. Dominion means sphere of influence. There can be two kingdoms. So don't, you have to change that thing, you know. The kingdom of darkness. Where? Where? The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. It's not possible. They, it's not possible. There's only one kingdom. The kingdom of God. Glory to God. Satan's one is called a dominion. It is a dominion. Huh? It's an illicit, illegal aggrandizement of encroaching on people's rights. He's an outlaw. That is, why he's, that is why Jesus said that you, in my name, you will cast out demons. They are illegal occupants. Satan and demons, they are illegal immigrants. They have no right to be here. They stole it from Adam. So it's a dominion. He has transferred us to a kingdom. The word kingdom split it into two. Dom of kings. Dominion of kings. That means we are superior. So not only are we out of the control, not only are we out of the dominion forever, we are also in a different realm. The two are not compatible. The two are, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Where we are, it is far beyond over 300 quadrillion light years. I mean, there, there's no connection. That's why I said, what, 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 what fellowship has light with darkness? Second Corinthians chapter six. What, 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 what? How? What fellowship? What fellowship? What koinonia? We are in a camp that is in a class of its own. So that is the thing that the Spirit of God wants you to get in your practical application. See, but if your mind is not developed, in the revelation of this, which he, Paul is talking about here, when problem comes, look at how my thinking used to be. The moment problem strikes, hey, Satan is, Satan is, Satan is trying to worry. You see, you are, you, you see, your, uh, your mind flips and makes the thing looks like helpless. Hey, this guy is like, after this guy, you know, we, 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 we can't do. You see where, you see where your mind is? We can't do based on that old thinking. That old thinking that it made it look like that. You know, the way when something happens, hmm, Satan. Then the guy too is rejoicing. Yes. Who call who? Well, who call my name? Who call my name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you want to see? You see, they give me fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's 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 keep it that way. Keep it that way. You know, 
I'm sure they'll be sniggering, but the apostles knew better. That's what he's talking about right here. Huh? Then he tells us the basis of that authority. He tells us the basis of it. Verse number 14. Huh? God has not finished. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control, out of the dominion of darkness, and has transferred us into the kingdom. The word is basilio, the sphere, the realm, an environment in a class of its own. Um, I mean, matchless, peerless. Huh? In whom? Now he brings, he brings, he brings a term, in whom? Huh? You are brought out of into. Huh? You are in whom? You are in the in whom? Now, how can, how can, how can the man who finished him, uh, the, the man who finished him, uh, the man who finished the dominion of darkness, uh, you are in him, the complete framework that finished him, and that man who has already finished still has a hold on you. How? How? You see, you see it's, it's the thinking in whom we have redemption through how did that come through his blood which means uh, the forgiveness of sins now that's 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 significant watch how did satan get entrance into the dominion in the first place through lies or deception right uh, and adam did not obey so that became the first main sin. So that means it was through sin and sins that Satan got the dominion over man. So if that dominion is going to be shut down, then that sin or sins must be removed because that is the playing ground. That is the door. That is the actually not your sin, not my sin, because you, you and I were not born then. It was Adam's sin that gave the entrance because we have the proof in Romans 5, 12 that just as through one man, Adam, sin entered. So Satan's dominion is only possible because of the sin of Adam. And the sin of Adam is a DNA nature. So once that DNA is in a person, then Satan wills control and dominion over that person. But I have good news for you and I, that the day you receive Jesus, Kabaya, the sin nature and sins were removed. The removal of it ended Satan's dominion over that entity forever. That's why I use the word, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of sins. The word forgiveness here is not English language forgiveness, which means pardon. The word is the Greek word, aphesis, which means removal of sins. So this sentence means the removal of sins. That's why he connected to the verse 13. He has transferred us from the dominion of darkness. How did that transfer happen? The moment you received Jesus and sin nature was removed from you, that is Satan's head, capital headquarters, sin nature, in which he operates against man everywhere, maximally. Once that landing ground was removed from your DNA, that was the end of Satan's control over you forever. So that's why you only attack from the outside. But there is no way. That's why you, the believer does not need any deliverance. This is the major deliverance because this was the thing that gave Satan entrance. The believer requires no deliverance. There's a difference between casting out devils and deliverance. When the Bible uses the word deliverance, it always refers to a movement. Because the first time the word deliverance was used, 
it was used in consonance with Israel leaving Egypt. And the Lord delivered them with, with such a great and an outstretched arm from Egypt out. Okay, now. It's a movement. That's deliverance. That is the deliverance. That's the deliverance that when it comes, it allows man to function. Casting out devils. All the people that Jesus casted devils out from them, all of them were not born again. There was no born again person yet at that time. In Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, in John. Because born again is only available or was only available after the resurrection of Jesus. And among the apostles, in all their dealings, the places that people were delivered from, from demonic activity, they were all unbelievers. Acts chapter 8 in Samaria. Acts chapter 16 by Paul and, and the girl. Elimus the sorcerer. All of them were unbelievers. There was no believer that ever went through any form of casting out of demon. None. None. You can read Acts. None. So when you read your Bible, don't look at the Jesus examples in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Nobody was born again. They are not believers. They were just Jews. So no believer needs deliverance. But it's a pastor friend. But when they laid hands on the person, the person was manifesting. Manifesting doesn't mean that there's a demon. Some of them, some people, they're already superstitious. They are already superstitious. They are already. Let me shock you with two things. Let me shock you. And I don't, I'm not having anything against that. In all, listen to me carefully. Come close, come close, come close. Listen to me carefully. In all of Jesus' ministry, even towards unbelievers, did you notice that nobody fell under the power of Jesus' ministration? There was not a time that Jesus laid down and somebody fell down. No. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. Jesus, who is anointed with the Holy Ghost, nobody fell. The only time somebody fell was when they came to arrest him in the garden of Gethsemane. And we were asking, are you, are you Jesus, the king of the Jews? Then he answered, uh, yes, I am here. And they all fell down. That was all. In all of Paul's ministry, nobody fell under the power, so to speak. And I'm not against that. I'm only just drawing your mind to something. That the fact that somebody is manifesting does not mean that it means that that's deliverance. Some people, they have already got their mind messed up already. So when they come to like, they, are, they, are, they have conjured up things in their mind. You see, your accurate knowledge of the word of God will determine your response to the word of God. If you have superstitious mindset of spirit, 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 some demon, spirit. If you have that mindset, then in every meeting, you begin to imagine things. You begin to imagine. Now, I'm not saying that there is no genuine, you know, sort of move of the spirit of God. Something, yeah, fine. But what I'm saying is that sometimes we the, 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 the extremes. Let's stay with the word. Stay with the word and you'll be safe. Stay with the word. So the forgiveness of sins, the remover, the believer does not need deliverance. You are sound. You are okay. The fact that things are not working well means that you just don't know how to use your authority. And that's why we are learning this. So once again, let me repeat. The word of God, like what we just read in Paul, wants you to know that you are no longer under Satan's dominion. You are no longer the believer. You are no longer. So now God has given you everything. Let us stop blaming things. Take your stand. Stand up. Rise up. What is it you want? Command it. Command it to come. Stand your ground. Move it. You know, I'm glad because for first time, I always thought that things were not working because, you know, it's from my uncle who didn't do something. I kept on blaming. Now I've come to realize that, oh, thank God. Now my mind is changed. It doesn't matter what the situation is. I have enough arsenal in Christ to blast my way through. And human beings are not my problem. So my prayer is not directed against them. Holy Ghost, fire, burn them, roast them. No, 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 no. We know that there are spirits that influence. So I deal with the activities of those, of those, of those spirits, not them, the activities. 
the activity. And if a believer, I believe that we have not even touched the surface on this area. So we have left, we have left too many things for long. I left too many things for long. I didn't know this. I was always waiting for that perfect day. One day, I remember I, I stayed with even a, a certain minister of the gospel, and I, I was shocked he could say that God, he was senior to me in those days when I first came to this country. He said, hmm, as for me, I am waiting for the day that God will bring my money. What, 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 when, how? You have authority. Well, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. You have authority. Use it. And you know the good thing? God is not tied how many times you want to use your authority. God, if you use it and nothing works, keep on using it. Keep on using it. Pastor, I've been using it for six months. Nothing like Keep on. I've been doing it. Keep on. And don't do it. Don't do it with, with the trial and error. I'm just trying to see. They say we should use our authority. Let me see. In the name of Jesus, I command 100 pounds to come. No, do it with boldness. Do it with unashamedness asking. Do it with, without reservation. Do it and know that you, are, you have the results. Do it and know that it works. Do it, do it and know that it works. And stay in that corridor. You'll be amazed that this thing has always been there and I've been sitting down waiting. What am I waiting for? What are we waiting for? Then we've got that we put some things off. Yes, I know that in some areas, God has got some timing. There are some things, there's time. Now, God doesn't live in time, but there are some things God, you know, God does bring some time. Not everything, but there are some areas, there are some key areas. For example, Galatians 4, 4 says that, uh, makes it clear that when the fullness of time was come, God sent his son. So, was, so even though God doesn't live in time, but in time, you organize when Jesus ought to be born. So some things, some things, even if it's protracted or it's long, that's not mean God has not answered. But probably it might be within a certain time frame that God has fixed it among men. So that's why you need to stand your ground. So there is a time element in some cases, not all, but in some cases. But what matters, whether time element, whether no time element, one thing I know, I have authority over Satan. And you know what? Satan is so scared He's so scared. He's so scared. He's so scared. He's, the moment you start to pray, he trembles. The Bible says that, that even demons fear and tremble. You don't know. They are so scared of you so much and of us. You have no idea. You have no idea. So when the eyes of our understanding are, are enlightened, we can stand. We can stand in our place of authority as the triumphant church of Christ. Glory to God. We are the triumphant church, not the militant church, not the defeated church. We are the triumphant church. We are the ones that cautions. Is there anything that you don't see right? You think that it's not right? Then command it and stop it and put, put in place what you want. Is there anything that is unusual in your office? It has been going on for too long. Stop that nonsense. Stop complaining. Stop complaining to your, your, your other working colleagues. You know, eh? all of a sudden, this manager has started acting funny. You know you, you know what you need to do? You tell the manager, oh, sorry, I'm just going to the bathroom. Enter the bathroom. Enter. Lock yourself for five minutes and begin. Rabosa, Ibataya, Kedeboto, Ibandaya, Kedevaya, Zaya, Zaya, Zaya. You foul spirit that is confusing the mind of my boss. You foul spirit. I command you, I stop your activities. Well, get out of here. Then you wipe your face nicely, do your makeup again, or give you a meal, dub your face, do your tie, come out of the place and go and sit down. You'll be there, then your boss will come. Oh, sorry. You know that thing that I said. I think um, we've, we've changed our mind. <laughs> we've changed our mind. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't need to, no need to argue with anybody. They are mistreating you in the office? No, Wahala. It is not them. It is not them. It is not them. Because you are light. Huh? The family is not treating you good? Don't worry. It's not them. It's not them. They are not our enemies. Because they are ignorant. They've opened their mind. 
to go into your control room. The money is not coming. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Why, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Enter control room. Uh -huh. The business is not going very well. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Enter control room. Uh huh. Things are not moving fast. Enter. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. Ha. Don't you see examples? Somebody prayed and the moon stayed. Hey. Somebody prayed and the moon. Ah. Huh? Old Testament person. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God.